Tuesday and not Wednesday. We make an exception today. Uh, and uh, we have today a, a, a very, very uh, a dear um, guest of mine because he's also having a very special profession that he will talk about. So I'm really happy that uh, to welcome Harold Moots of the uh, St. Regis Hotel, who is the chief concierge there. Hello, Harold. How are you? Nice yes, to you, Andre. Good, good seeing you. Nice, nice seeing you, and thank you for, for coming here. Uh, so we're going to get right into the sub subject, but I have to give always a little housekeeping to our uh, viewers and, and listeners. Number one is, <clears throat> excuse me, there is a chat um, you can use that we can see and that everybody can see, and please use it. Um, it's our opportunity to get your questions or your comments, so that would be great if we could get this live. And if, we, if you're not willing to share anything live, you can always send me uh, a message on LinkedIn, where you are watching us, or on Facebook, or on YouTube. So those are the different places where you can send your messages. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, that we usually meet on Wednesday, 6.30, but again, today's an exception, and sometimes we have exceptions. So let's get right to it. We have a, a very interesting topic tonight, because that's one of my dear topic indeed, and it is customer centricity, it's customer service, it's customer experience. And uh, why does it come into uh, <clears throat> you change the world is because people who are caring about customers change the world. And uh, Harold is one of them. I am sure it, it, it's the case. So Harold, maybe if we can get a little bit of your background, just a, a few words about how you got to where you are today. Thank you, Andre. So I have been in the industry for about 27 years. Uh, right. I started back in 1994 at the Place Atene, uh, where I started as a junior concierge with no experience. And I had a, uh, an amazing chef concierge, Eugenio Canigo, who was my mentor and old classic style Italian, you know, professional gentleman. And so I had a great guide to get me through. Uh, I was there for 12 years. I left in 2006 as the chef concierge there. I moved over to the New York Palace, uh, which then was the Palace, not the Latte Palace. Right. And just before Dorchester took it over, and I was working there. And then I was invited to join the team here in 2008. And so I've been here since then, and I've just become the chef concierge as of, uh, let's say, September, October. Now, some people are not very familiar with that profession. And the first thing I would maybe ask you, as you have your uniform on you, is maybe to explain. Correct. What are the things that you have on your chest here? <laughs> so, <laughs> so the embellishments on my chest would be uh, the, probably the most well-known one is Le Clé d'Or, which is the Golden Geese. And right. this is an international organization around the world. Um, Pre-COVID, I would say we had about 4,500 members. We're down to about 2,500 now after everything has happened in the service world. Um, I also have a membership key here that looks like a, a little key, and the teeth of the key are the city of New York. Okay. So we have an organization here in New York City, which used to be about 200 strong. We're now down to maybe just under 100. Um, and we have membership meetings every month, um, nine times a year. And then we have a holiday party where we invite all of our vendors along. And we have meetings where we discuss you know, things that are going on in the city and, and our relations to our vendors, our restaurants, our tour guides, our tour operators, uh, Broadway, of course, because that's big in New York. So we're frequently invited to many uh, just to see them or invited to restaurants to taste the food and have the, uh, the experience and also meet the key people because right. you have your VIPs who need, you know, that extra level of service. And for example, tonight I have a VVIP that I needed to move a reservation for, which was pretty difficult because the weather is so nice. Right. But I was able to make it happen shortly before this call. Okay. So, little things like that, that. Contacts are important. Yes, yes. This, this may be difficult for people to, to realize how difficult it is to do what you just did. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, you know, high demanded, uh, you know, uh, rest restaurants or any kind of venues. Uh, and you need the Correct. connections or the resourcefulness. Uh, to get this for your for your client so this is how extreme it is in a way extreme when we come Correct. to the high end side of the customer service and this is what i always thought 
I come from the same, uh, you know, from the same industry, and I come from the same tier of customers as well. And I worked for the Plaza Atelier, but the one in Paris. And I mm -hmm. <clears throat> remember that I always, uh, my motivation, my purpose was, if I want to take care of customers all in my, my career, but by just starting with this high-end, top-tier customer, I probably will learn what mm -hmm. demanding is, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, oh, yeah. so let's try to talk about this for a few minutes, because when you coach or when you train people to be customer-centric, yes. customer-centric, mm -hmm. we talk a lot about best practice, we talk a lot you know, about processes, but the truth is, what Correct. is the, the magic formula, if there is any? I think that you need to pretty much wipe out all preconceived notions and constantly say to yourself, I need to think outside the box. Yeah. I mean, while there is, there's obviously a lot of theory out there on, on how to do things, you know, yeah. especially in my world, you have to think outside the box because, for example, one of my things tonight was to find a garment bag for one of my Middle Eastern guests to house his abaya. And he doesn't want a simple you know, suit bag for a man's suit, you need something longer because it's a right. full gown, you know, and I, I made numerous calls, but thank goodness to the kindness of people at Bergdorf Goodman, they happen to have a coat, you know, bag that will, will do it. So it's a right. fabric bag. And I just have to think outside the box. I can't think the normal vendors that I'm thinking of, and I have to be a little bit more friendly and gregarious to try to get them to give it to me as opposed to paying whatever it would cost to get a garbage bag. But I got it done, so he just okay. my page just got back with it. <clears throat> but what do you what do you have in mind? I'm very much into what you have in mind in general when you do something and when you stretch for something. So, tell me what is in your right. mind when you are kind of doing this kind of mission impossible type of thing. I, I just look at it as for me, it's just basic guest service is taking care of the guests, and ensuring that they're getting what they want. That within Claydor and the Association, we we on ethics that we do things that are ethical and legal. So, right. so long right. as you're not asking me to procure drugs or you know kill somebody, no. <laughs> I can probably get you something that you want, you know, within reason. But uh, sometimes things are just sold out or it's just not available at all. You know, we've tried every method, but we do our best. Okay, so th that's that's your personal mindset. Now, what is demanded of you other Correct. than the ethical, the clidor? from the brand that you represent what what is there for the for the guests in other words when they they have an experience and they leave the hotel and they they remember something right so we have uh within the under the married umbrella we are the saint regis we are the top right. level of the brand along with the ritz carlton uh we're the top part of the umbrella so our five star five diamond guest experience is that we will make your stay as memorable as possible so we listen for little cues, you know, distinct little cues. People slip in all the time that it's a celebration. So we dig a little deeper and we're constantly digging for information. As you know, CRMs, we hold a lot of data on our guests. And so I know preferences, you know, tastes, allergies, things like that. Little things that are noted to keep in the future for them to you know, know about when they come back. If they have an allergy to something, we can make sure that we send up an amenity that doesn't have nuts, for example, or that they like a particular type of room or type of pillow or a view, all these little things that excel in the customer service area that keep us on our game. Yeah, I, you know, I go back to the days, it makes me very old, when CRM was just a card. <laughs> yes. The, the, the oh, French. I remember the old index cards <laughs> and, and the red diary book. Right, yes. exactly, exactly. But it's important. It's a very important what you tell you're saying right now. I, I really want to make a point of it. You know, from the perspective of, of the guest, <clears throat> from the perspective of the guest, it looks like not because of the price they pay for a night in the hotel, but because of just the standard behind the brand. The goal Correct. is that these guests can get almost what within the legalities and, of course, the possibilities can get. And and you're one of the agents to make this happen. And and, right. and and in the team, uh, let's let's try to take the context of a hotel for a minute because I don't know if there is many people here who are from the hospitality industry. Um, what else do, would you say for the guest stay for the experience? Right, is key is is really kind of very sensitive into the team spirit and 
and people's qualifications, for example? Well, I mean, languages are a part of our, not necessarily a requirement, but we're preferring to have additional languages, which we do on our team. We have quite a few languages we speak, um, which makes, you know, the experience for the customer a little bit easier. So if they come from sure. Europe or from the Middle East, we have languages to speak in their native language if that's what they prefer. It just makes the experience that much more smooth. Right. That's one of the things, um, again, with the CRM, just knowing, knowing people's preferences, uh, we prefer to dig a little deeper when we talk to guests. They come to us with very vague requests. Hi, I want dinner at a, at a great restaurant with excellent food. Right. And that's very vague. So we, we break them down and we, you know, we try to talk about the experience and the atmosphere and the food and if there's allergies and is there a special occasion. And then we narrow it down and then we have a little bit better idea of exactly what to recommend based on what they're looking for. Okay. So when things are smooth, everything happens okay. Then okay, everything Correct. you know, uh, everything as we say uh, is, yes. is is smooth. But when you get, kind of really now get into a hurdle or it's not really going smooth, what can you give us an example maybe or something that you know? How I mean, you, emp empathy how is it? empathy is probably the biggest yes. element is right. understanding what the guests' needs are and what yeah. their wants are and being able to work within what they want. And sometimes, I'll be honest with you, we, we can't come through, whether it's a last minute ticket to a concert that is seriously and truly sold out. Um, you know, it's just, yeah. it is it is what it is. And we've tried every angle and every connection to do it. Right, right, right. But it is what it is. And to be, to be able to provide, you know, I hate to say the word solace or compassion for the issue, you know, we do our best, you know, and, right. and hopefully they understand. Got it, got it. So I, I would like also to share one point that I, I feel about the brand, you know, is that in hospitality yes. uh, or maybe in, look, in luxury retail, for example, a guest yes. or a customer can identify the brand through something that the service is about, meaning the DNA of the service. It's like recognizing yes. a human being by the name or by the physical aspect of the person. <clears throat> There's mm -hmm. a recognition of the brand through what you do. You know, Correct. so if I go to St. Regis, New York, and I go to St. Regis, Hawaii, or I go to St. Regis, Paris, um, there is something I'm going to find in one, in all the three hotels, in other words, that has something in common. What, what, what would it be? So I would say that would be for the St. Regis brand is the, the key word of bespoke. Right. right. Sort of a hand tailored experience. Yes. And that, that's what we're known for. Yes, and tailored. So, for Customized. example, with Ritz, uh, yeah, Ritz Carlton has the ladies and gentlemen, and the Westin brand has you know the gym health concept. Right. So, our, we are we're known for our butlers. For the butlers. So we have the English sort of classic old English traditional butler service. So when guests come at least to our property, we have butlers on every floor. When you go to one of our other properties around the world, uh, which I think we're approaching forty or forty-two now. Right. Uh, they only offer butler service for guests who are staying in suites. Okay. So it's an additional service there. Otherwise, if you just book a regular room, you don't get the packing or unpacking or the morning wake up call with the French press coffee. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So that's how we can understand all of us. You know how how the the guests here can have expectations, and and Correct. how he's going to rate. You know almost the experience. Um, good, good, good. So, as you know, uh, the name of this uh, this program is "You Change the World." You know, and 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 the fact is that in my experience every day, and all the people that I meet with, that I coach, usually on when I do mediation, there is definitely um, an impact that people have on other people to the extent that yes. they might not even know they do. <laughs> true. So, this is true. Right, you you might have a little bit of more of the knowledge of the impact you have, but I love stories. We all love stories. So I don't know if you can recall one or two situations that could be shared um, about really maybe even life saving situations. Something that really you got feedback that it changed someone's life. Well, I mean, we all have stories, and the, yes. the press I know loves to get the juicy, dirty stories and you know the names associated with it, but. Our discretion is is primary, right up front. So I will share that there was, 
you know, one of the ones that touched my heart was my colleague, John, um, who was introduced to a family who had a young son who had cancer. And one of his greatest wishes was to always dine at uh, restaurant Danielle. Now, Danielle uh, Ballou, who I've known for 27 years because he actually opened, you know, he started his experience in New York at the Plaza Atene back in the day uh, before he went off on his own and created his own brand. Yeah. So we, we have very good connections to Danielle and he loves Claydor Concierge. Right. So, you know, when we really, really need something, I have people there that I can count on to create, you know, an amazing experience. So this, this child, I think he was 11 years old, was really interested in doing that. So we, we got the reservation, we did it. But to step it up a notch more, we got Danielle to come out and meet with the boy right. and take him into the kitchen and show him, because I think the boy's dreams, even though burdened with the, you know, the cancer diagnosis, really wanted to maybe be a chef one day. And so Danielle came out in his whites and his hat and he brought him into the kitchen and he showed him around and, you know, gave him the experience, you know, what it is to sort of like be a chef in a, in a top tier restaurant in New York. And we got Beautiful. the most amazing accolades after that. So it really formed a bond with the family in the hotel. That's a really gorgeous story. Yes. Very touching. Yeah. Um, I know I, I, uh, I was thinking of something when you were saying that. That has this impact, yes. But uh, the Clédor by itself mm -hmm. is an international organization. And I, I always thought, and I not only thought, I, I know uh, for a fact when I was back, back in the days uh, in the hospitality industry, the Clédor mm -hmm. being a, a network means that you guys are networking with each other, can connect with each other. So if someone is stuck, for example, right? Uh, yes. These countries, especially uh, probably maybe during COVID, I don't know. But when you're stuck in a, in a country, you cannot pass the customs for anything that changed or a political regime that changed. Did you have, the, 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 what, what concierge would do to get someone unstuck in a situation like that, very serious, where someone really cannot go back to his country anymore? Right. So, I mean, obviously working within the legal limits of the law and what's allowed sure. with yeah. various countries and so forth. Have you seen the movie Grand Budapest Hotel by Wes Anderson? Yes, 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 yes. Do you remember the crazy antics they did to try and get this guy unstuck from his situation? Yes. So that, that although in a comedic way, that is sort of what we do. So right. we've got this network of colleagues. It's a brotherhood of sorts, a brotherhood, mm -hmm. sisterhood, where I can rely on my colleagues around the world uh, to perform the miracles that I do here at home. So if I have, you know, Andre Pulitzer stuck in Paris and he left his passport, you know, we will move heaven and earth to make sure that you're able to get on the plane so you can get on to your next destination. Right. So we have certainly done that for guests and, and worked with embassies and, and rushed things through passport agencies. Um, you know, we do have a lot of contacts around the world. So, yeah, yeah. yeah and I mean, goes I've got friends at the airport, which is, you know, I believe in contacts on the ground. And I, I've always tried my best to keep contact at the airports because you have you know, Joe Schmo who left a laptop on a plane. By the time you talk to the 800 number and all their customer service nightmare, you know, it's three hours later. But if I just call my guy that's in the lounge and he knows somebody who's at the gate and they can go on the plane and get it, then we can figure out how to get that laptop back faster. Right, right. Well, I was thinking exactly of the situation of someone who helped, needed my help because she got her pearl you know, a very expensive piece of jewelry taken by the uh, by the customs and wanted to have it back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> but listen. Well, I, I mean, we, we have friends here at the NYPD and we've made some miracles happen. Right. For guests. Well, well let, let's make sure. I mean, people understand. Connections doesn't mean uh, privileges. It means some, simply that you come for the good cause, for the good purpose, ethically proper. Right. And that's why, you know, when it's about someone who has influence because the, your guests have influence. You don't want have yes. to, you want that to you don't want to have them leave a bad experience right in New York or in the U.S. when they come sure. back to the country. So you are an agent, you know, and your colleagues are agents for that person to really come leave again the the, the premises, the experience with with a good feeling, and that that's that's really how much we, you we all need to understand. And one step further, I want to say, when you say people at the airport, when you say restaurant owners, when you say someone at the, the, the box office in the theater, that means mm -hmm. you need 
through a lot of work yourself of networking behind the scene so that you're always, when you're in front of the guest, able to satisfy the guest request. Correct. And, and that's and, what I've been doing for 27 years is yeah. checking out new restaurants, making contacts, going to nightclubs, yeah. going to museums, going to NYC and company and going to their big events and doing business card exchanges. This has been my passion ever since. Yes, yes, yes. But, you know, it's difficult to, without your, your, your testimony here, uh, people would have a hard time understanding that the concierge does that during the day or during the night, you know. It's a constant 24-7 right. uh, focus on, on what the customer needs. So it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Agreed. So, so let's try to see now another aspect that I really like very much. It's really my passion of today is how do you pass this through? How do you co convey, uh, you know, that skill when you need to coach or when you need to train. So when you have, for example, young, young people joining your team, how does it go right. with, with training? What, what, what does it entail? So I think when it comes to the concierge profession especially, I don't think that you seek it out. I think it seeks you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've, I've unfortunately had the misfortune of losing a lot of colleagues post COVID who moved on to different things and I've had to rehire new staff. I've hired seasoned concierge, which is, you know, helpful, but it's been, it's been difficult this season. Um, but in teaching them the, the five-star qualities of how to speak to a guest, again, how to yeah. think outside the box, um, yeah. you just need to be, you need to have that passion and that drive. And if you don't, then you really shouldn't be in this position. And unfortunately okay. some people have gotten a little, so we say long in the tooth when it comes to that um and they just need to retire and move on so but <laughs> okay. some people also realize it with themselves and they move on but some people are just they have that passion they have that drive and those are the best concierges out there so if, if you decline if you kind of apply all of this you're saying to let's try to imagine i mean you know put yourself into a brand now that is not as high end uh okay. Look at retail. Look at uh, grocery stores. Look at um, mm -hmm. you know uh, airports. Uh, you know the people mm -hmm. go. I mean, I went through uh, recently. You know, traveling is becoming extremely challenging. Obviously, with all the things yes. that you have to do and the the the, the, uh, the the COVID test that you have to do 24 hours and not more before departure when you come back from Paris to the U.S. and which right. is still applicable and which is really a, a nightmare. Uh, see if you don't have it, you miss your flight. So Correct. what I'm trying to ask you is try to, to, to imagine this on a lower scale. What, mm -hmm. So if we talk about training, if we talk about customer experience, what would be your advice? I mean, to all the people who are in charge of that, who are establishing, uh, again, best practice, processes, uh, standard, standardization for franchisees, you know, or what, what do you, what mm -hmm. is your, your, your advice about the customer experience? Well, I think it falls back to empathy is just understanding what the customer wants and what the customer needs and yourself. Like, what would you do? How would you phrase it? How would you go about a certain way to get something done? I mean, there's certainly on the retail aspect, like you mentioned, like, I hate to say the word Macy's, um, but, you know, <laughs> I've heard it from more than one guest as, as a brand um, that they just, the, the sales staff just doesn't seem to have the, oomph to want to help out like it's, okay. it's a struggle to find somebody who actually wants to help you and that's too bad because i mean they, they're an iconic brand here in new york city and now we're on the country and and to not have that willingness to sell and to want to help out i think i can't wrap my head around that but then right, you look right. at brands like Berger of goodman or you look at barney's which unfortunately is gone you know yeah. they, they make oh. that special effort they, they you know they're not i'm not gonna say intrusive but they make the extra step and they they introduce themselves and they offer their assistance, little things like that. And that's what I teach my staff as well, is to make sure that, you know, you're welcoming the guest. We have that 510 rule, you know, five feet, 10 feet, at 10 feet, make eye contact at five feet, make audio, audio contact, introduce yourself and offer yourself or services. So I hope everybody hears you out well here. There is a oh, best practice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, dicta it's dictated by principles like you, you just what you said. 
And I think that those brands, like those what you mentioned or, or others, uh, sometimes you can have an incredible experience in a, in a I don't know, in a Trader's Joe, right? Because I always had a lot oh, yeah, of experience of there. Oh, yeah, of course. Because there is this kind of best practice and this kind of, 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 and I will tell you another thing too. When surveys are well done, surveys, customer surveys, yes. and yes. they are really using the data properly, then, then they're going to apply the data and they're going to rectify or adjust different kind of training um, they have and, and apply it because they heard it, Correct. they got the feedback. And I think it happens with you maybe more directly with the guest, but... <laughs> But surveys help. Well, we we do the same. We have follow up. We have follow up surveys. Have guests checks out, and we mm -hmm. ask them, you know, what went wrong or what didn't go wrong, and you know, was there anybody you'd like to name, you know, that made your experience that much more special? And they do. They do take the effort. I just find, having done this for so long and having heard for so long, I think more people take the energy to write a negative comment or critique. They seem to have more energy to do that than they do for five minutes to write a positive note and maybe indicate a name of somebody who like changed their stay or was really welcoming or did something little outside of the norm to make it special. Yes. They seem yes. to forget that, but they love to complain. <laughs> well, now my, it's, so true. You know, it's even more dangerous for you and for all the, 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 uh, I'm going to say the, the, the vendors or the retailers or the service providers is that there is things right. like, uh, like uh, travel websites, not to mention what it is, and where they write reviews. So you get the reviews. Right, exactly. And right. so while, while we are a top-notch, you know, five-star, five-diamond hotel, you know, we are rated on those, those platforms, shall we say, and not name anybody. But, right. you know, we're, we're tiered. So we're not, like, in the top 10. We're not in the top 20. But we're also competing against hotels that are two- and three-star. Right. You know, so we're not really grouped in our category as we should be. Unfortunately, we're competing against, you know, the lower level, you know, brand hotels of every brand right. that don't serve at our level. And that's really too bad. You know, we're compared against other hotels that are one, two, three star hotels, um, when we should really be only competing with four and five. I, I agree with you completely that we have to com compare Apple to Apple, really. Right. Um, I mean, when I look but... at when I look at my morning report in the morning, you know, they always put the comparative number on there. and. We're number, I think, one, 101 or 110. Sometimes it fluctuates every day. Right, right. Um, against all these other hotels in the city, like against 540 other hotels. Yeah, that's, and I said, well, not really. Like, we should be compared to only, like, our, dare I course. say the word, comp set or competitive set. So, in other words, I would say don't go to this kind of rating because they are going to mislead you. <laughs> um, right? They're not comparing right, I mean, the but there was, properly. I think there was a recent article I was just about to, I was just about to read an article that actually said that, that don't necessarily always believe what you see on these five-star right. reviews. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think so. it, the good things about reviews, though, it puts guys on guard. I mean, definitely you don't want it to... It does, oh, for sure. Right. And, 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 and there's Correct, some right. people who, as you said, they will have a, a, a little pleasure, right, to, to write a bad review and say, you know, I went through this bad experience and I'm going to rate it to, to that state to a, a one star. <laughs> If not the negative right, stuff. Exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, again, when, when you log into the network here in our hotel, when you log in into the room and you log into the Wi-Fi, you're you're sent to a short little survey, and they give you a chance to rate us from one to ten. And I've I've seen it all. I've seen everything from a one to a ten, and back down. Um, but sometimes you know one little thing was wrong, and they score you a one. Exactly. And it's so hard to recover from a one as opposed to like an eight or a nine. If one little thing went wrong, let's say, I don't know, the, you didn't get the room category you wanted, and then they give you a one, it's not the end of the world. No. You could have given us a seven or an eight, and we could have rectified it because we all get copies of it, and then we can, we can talk to you. We can see if we can get the room category you want. Right. No, that's the good thing about but it. But unfortunately, impatience, right. impatience has found its way into travel, too. Yes, yes, yes. As you know. <laughs> Very nice. Listen, I really appreciate that you you, you joined us. We we're reaching almost the uh, the, the seven o'clock hour, uh, Eastern Standard Time. But I, I really appreciate it. I think that I want also to mention that we'll do another program on uh, patient experience, which is a different you know different type. 
um, a bit sometimes more emotional, more um, have more ramifications when something goes wrong. It can really harm someone. But uh, on uh, your uh, side of the equation, this is really was a beautiful testimony. It uh, also shared again how impactful you are on people, and uh, even they are you know paying a high price to get the kind of service they get. They already um, they also can influence others about what they experience through you. And again, this they can serve as a standard for any kind of tier of service. It's not only because right. it's high end, everything you do can be done in the same fashion for any kind of, of level or tier of service. That's what I, I want to say. Correct. <laughs> okay. Harold, thank you. I hope we'll see we'll see you Wonderful. again. You're very welcome. Okay. We'll talk thank soon. You. Be thank well you, Andre. and safe. Take care. Have a great Bye -bye. night. You, we'll do. You too. Thank you. Bye. Take care.